So how many people in here identify as a social entrepreneur or as a social change agent or want to do some sort of social good in the world? So a lot of people, awesome. Um, what I want to talk about today are some of the things I think are essential for social change agents to have success in their work. Um, and I'll tell you about my, my work that I've done in the Amazon rainforest. So in, in 2010, I went and lived with a tribe in, in Hondonia, Brazil. Hondonia is in the northwest side of Brazil. Uh, I lived with a tribe uh, on the front lines of, uh, of the Amazon, doing some work on a UN project, a uh, carbon finance project, and, and then implementing a project sponsored by Google.org, bringing mobile phones, the internet, computers, things like that down there. Um, the tribe that I lived with uh, in 1969 was contacted by road engineers uh, from the Brazilian government. Three years later, they, they, they were a tribe of 5,000 people. Three years later, uh, their population was decimated, lost over 95% of their population. They were down to less than 300 people. Um, over the course of the next several decades, they slowly rebuilt, but life could never be the same. So fundamentally, they as a, as, as a tribe changed. They lost over 75% of their land. They still occupy a landmass that's 155,000 hectares, um, which is something about like 50 times the size of San Francisco. Uh, and, and they've rebuilt to a population that's about 3,000. Um, when, when I went down there, it was, it was really interesting. My, my, my journey to go down there was, I think, a spiritual one. And fundamentally, I, I think that that's one of the things that connects us as human beings. So when, when I went down there, what was really interesting was the way that I was welcomed into this community. Uh, it, it wasn't something where uh, I felt like an outsider. Uh, but as a white kid from Ohio, they, they immediately welcomed me. And it's something that I contribute to the first thing that I think that we as social change agents need to embrace if we're going to have success in our work, and it's that our underlying connection as human beings is spiritual. Um, the first, one of the first days I was down there, the chief of this tribe, who has lunch with Kofi Annan, he's like an international development rock star. His name is Almir Surui. If you Google that or if you Google the tribe, Surui, S-U-R-U-I, you'll find dozens of articles. He was named Brazil's most innovative business person in 2011. Um, the, the, the work that we've done down there has been covered in NPR, Washington Post, North Time, like all over. Um, and so this guy's a rock star, and I'm just, you know, 24-year-old 20, kid. Uh, and he pulls me aside, and he says, I just want to acknowledge that you're down here, and I, I want you to know that I approach you as I approach anyone, and as I, I try to instill in, in our tribe that anybody approaches anyone, I approach you with the same kind of respect that I would a head of state. And I want you to take that. I want you to approach our tribe. I want you to approach every person with that same amount of respect. And it's because fundamentally we are spiritual beings. And so I acknowledge you as a spiritual being. And in order to have success in the work that we are doing, we need to acknowledge that we are spiritual beings. So over the course of, of, of my stay down there, which was a, a, about a month, that, that was something that really resonated with me because the work that I did, whether it was working with people to teach them how to use an Android phone um, or, or doing financial analysis on, on this uh, carbon finance project, fundamentally the, the, the cause just felt bigger than myself. Um, it didn't feel like, oh, hey, like I'm sent from God or anything like that. But, you know, like I think that that messiah complex that sometimes social entrepreneurs embody is bad, but it, it, it connected me into something greater. And I think that's something that all social change agents need to embrace. Uh, the second thing I think is essential for change agents and social entrepreneurs to have success in their work is uh, something I call taking off our shoes. Uh, so when I was first getting initiated into, into the tribe, it wasn't you know, completely a seamless thing, uh, and particularly with, with the kids. Uh, so as part of, part of the, the work that I was doing down there, I'd be working with kids five, six, seven hours a day doing things, homework, you know, cooking, washing clothes, you know, kind of typical things. Um, but I hadn't really built, built a bond with them. And so in, in the Amazon and in Brazil, uh, kids love to play soccer. In fact, it's probably the one thing they do more than anything down there. And I, I grew up playing soccer. So 
it was probably the second or third day that I was down there. Uh, they don't have a field, right? And so the kids, the kids play on dirt. And they play without shoes because this is a bottom billion community. They can't afford anything like that. So you know, they play with you know, an old ball on dirt and without shoes. And I was down there and, you know, wearing tennis shoes, wearing athletic shoes because, you know, we're hiking in the Amazon or whatever, right? And, and these kids are playing and, and I want to get engaged with them. I want to get involved with them. And so I stand on the side of the field, but I still have my shoes on. And I kind of put myself in a position where I can receive the ball. I can join kind of the flow of play. And they're not passing to me. And I notice that they look at me. I notice that they uh, are kind of laughing. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I'm not a part of what they're doing. And so after about 10 minutes, I kind of got it. I was like, all right, screw this. I took off my shoes and stepped a little bit further onto the pitch. And the kids stopped. And one of the kids laughed and passed the ball to me. And we played for the next like hour and a half or so. It was one of these things where, you know, I think a lot of times we think of going out and doing change work and uh, there, there can be a bit of a, maybe our civilization has something that your civilization doesn't have, you know, particularly in international development. We know how to do things that you don't know. Uh, you know, if, if I'm doing financial analysis and teaching how to use a mobile phone, like, you're learning from me, right? Like, I think that those kinds of mentalities somehow kind of just get bred into the way that a lot of international development programs, a lot of social change works. And I think that in order for us to have success, we need to take off our shoes. We need to be humble. We need to you know, remove whatever differences we, we construct for ourselves from the communities that we want to be a part of and that we want to help um, and get on their level. And so fun, you know, fundamentally, in, in, in tandem with you know, us all being spiritual beings and connecting with each other on a spiritual level and, and living that, you know, you know, we, we really need to you know, physically, mentally get on that same level. Um, the third thing I want to share with you is that, you know, connected with all of that, that, you know, we're all spiritual beings, um, take off our shoes, get on the same level, be humble, uh, is that the work that we're doing as social change agents is continuous. This is not, the, the, the issues that we're facing, and this is, you know, perhaps obvious, but I think sometimes we think, you know, there will be an end point, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll achieve a milestone and everything will be better, you know. And that, that isn't the case. So with, with, with this tribe, we've raised tens of millions of dollars um, with you know, broader work throughout the Amazon. We, we've raised a lot more. We've brought mobile phones to something like 50 indigenous communities, the internet to, mobile phones the internet to like 50 indigenous communities throughout Brazil. This is something that they want, something that they're using to communicate with the outside world, educate themselves, connect with other clans, uh, uh, catch illegal logging and mining as it's happening. You know, it's things that are being used for for really good things, but still, like the challenges are there, you know. So even even with projects that that, that have a lot of success, uh, <laughs> the work is probably never going to be over, right? It's not going to be over in my lifetime. I'm, I'm 28 years old, right? A hundred years from now, 80 years from now, whenever, right? When, when I pass, that these issues are likely still going to be around, and so I think it's fundamental that in order for us to have success along the way that we resolve ourselves that this is, this is something that is very, very, very long term. It's, it's continuous. It's never ending. There are going to be many births, many deaths, many rebirths in ourselves and our work along the way. And, and, and if we don't have the, the spiritual resolve to just get through that, then fundamentally we're not going to have success. Um, so I, I feel like I, I've, I've just kind of shared my own journey and, and, and insights uh, of, of, of how some of my work is has evolved, um, but I, I, I just felt, I was called to share that after a conversation with Ken in, and you know, she, she reached out to me, and thank you for doing so, to, to come up here and speak with you. Um, and that's really it. <laughs>